week one, Marcus Mariota exceeded our expectations and Jameis Winston fell short of them. But this week, Mariota was sacked seven times as the Titans lost to the Browns. Jameis, on the other hand, who was intercepted twice and sacked four times in a losing NFL debut, kept it together against New Orleans yesterday. He completed 14 of 21 passes for 207 yards and was not intercepted. Skip, what did yesterday's games tell you about Marcus and Jameis? Stephen A. It told me that the NFL world dramatically overreacted to Marcus Mariota's week one performance and, and also many people overreacted to Jameis's week one performance by declaring him a bust, that he should have gone down the draft, that Mariota should have gone number one. Jameis beat Drew Brees at Drew Brees yesterday, mm -hmm. and, and that is not easy to do. Obviously, he had help from his run game and obviously from Lovey's defense, but he played big yesterday. I didn't get to watch much of it. I was flipping back and forth, right. but he did not turn the football over, and he made one big throw for one big touchdown to Vincent Jackson. Mariota, I did watch. He was pretty awful. Had a long day in Cleveland, and to me, the pressure was on, as Molly said, seven sacks. His accuracy, as I've often said, it came and mostly went. He was indecisive with the football. He held the ball too long, and then he got really, really careless with the football, as many rookie quarterbacks are wont to do. But in this case, he lost two fumbles and had lost another one and got saved by a clock violation. They didn't quite get the snap off in time, but he got hit and, and sack fumbled again and lost that one. So, again... I'm standing by my guns. I think Jameis is going to be very good and prove to be better than Marcus Mariota in the long haul. And now we only have two weeks to go by. Well, I agree with you um, on your second point, not on your first. I think that a lot of people overreacted by how awful Jameis Winston was in week one. Um, I thought he did a good job yesterday. I thought he was steady, didn't turn the ball over, completed 14 of his 21 passes, threw a touchdown. Doug Mart was running the football relatively effectively. He was. More than four yards. A carry mm -hmm. finished with 78 yards on the afternoon. And I just think that, you know, excuse me, from mm -hmm. that perspective, I thought it was fine. I do think you're being a bit hard on Mariota. Here's why. That brother took a hit earlier in the game where he got not only hurt his ankle, but he got hit high right at the time he got hit low as well. He was woozy. I was wondering whether or not he should have even been in the game. He wasn't steady, and his whole game changed. And I think it's because all of his faculties weren't in order. It wasn't just the seven sacks. It was how hard he was getting hit. He, I, I did not hear any concussion he, he, protocol right. for him. Yeah, neither did I. I didn't okay. see it. I was watching. I was yeah. looking for it. I was looking for whether or not it was going to happen. I saw a guy getting popped. I saw a guy that looked a little bit woozy for 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 a few for a couple of plays. I saw a guy that was obviously very reluctant and hesitant because of the hits that he was taking, but was willing to show his toughness and stand in there and take some punishment. I don't believe he'll do that again. I don't believe he has to worry about getting sacked seven times most afternoons. I think adjustments will be made by Ken Wisenhunt and his staff, and as a result, you'll learn from it. But I think more importantly, you not only saw guys praising his talent and his IQ, but I think yesterday they were praising his toughness. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, we didn't know too much about Mariota. I'm not saying that any of your points are wrong about what you saw from his play. I'm saying considering how woozy he was from those initial shots he was taking, and it was really the first time, because we all know that week one didn't even exist. I mean, he was sitting back there taking pictures, calling the parents well, and everybody else. I mean, there was nothing that went on with him against Tampa Bay. Okay, Yesterday but, was his but first your, NFL you know, game. You made the point about Tom Brady. Two step drops, the ball's gone. No. Against Tampa, everything was pop, pop, pop. It I was agree. all dink and dunk, and then yards after catch. No, I totally agree with yeah. you, but what I'm saying to you is I'm, no, I'm only speaking in terms of the punishment. Mm -hmm. The fact that he stood up in there and took some punishment he clearly was not exposed to in week one, I think is going to serve well for him when it comes to his teammates recognizing his skill sets and his toughness. And yeah. I think that's something that could work to his advantage. So just like all I'm saying is just like we ignored somewhat what we saw from Jameis Winston in week 
one, because of how awful Tampa Bay was, we need to ignore what we saw from Mariota in game two based on how he got little protection and how Tennessee played by a yard large yesterday afternoon. From this point forward, we can look at it a bit differently. But I'm going to give him a mulligan based off of what we saw yesterday. And not only that, let's let's take a moment to, to praise Johnny Manziel just a little bit there. That he showed up yesterday, hey. played really well. Yeah, against a Dick LeBeau defense that's right. right that did a number on Jameis Winston down right. in Tampa in the first right. week so that's pretty good that's right yeah yep. some people are calling for him to be named the starter moving forward I think I think I think he should Bill I think he should at least next tweeted week. that out He's next week. all right so up next Winston at Houston and Mariota versus Indy speaking of the Colts Andrew Luck and the Colts trying to avoid an 0-2 start tonight on ESPN against the Jets the guys will let you know if they will that's after the break First Take is presented by Chase Freedom. The card is for the essentials. The cash back is for the fun. And in part by La Quinta. Book now at LQ.com to get the lowest price guaranteed. La Quinta. We have an AFC battle on Monday Night Football in Indianapolis. Jets take on the Colts tonight at 8.15 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Stephen A., Jets Colts, who you got? <sighs> Colts are my pick to go to the Super Bowl mm. out of the AFC. We all mm -hmm. know that. Wasn't enamored with their performance in game one. I think they're going to lose tonight, too. Really? Wow. Cromartie's sprained knee probably won't play, but T.Y. Hilton being out. Mm -hmm. no, Andre, that's, that's sort of unclear. I he he may be that. out. He mm -hmm. may be out, and Andre Johnson's your number one guy if that happens, and Darrell Revis is on him. Okay, if you're going against Andrew Luck, then I have to go against Andrew <laughs> Luck. I, now I'm convinced because I was on the fence, so I'll go also Jets. You're going to go Jets? Yeah. All right, Jets Colts tonight on ESPN. Thanks for hanging with us and enjoy the game. I'm with Eric on this one. Now, I can't fix how good Sam Bradford is because I never liked him from the start before that first draft. Okay. Watched him at University of Oklahoma yeah. every snap, never loved him. Bad idea to take him number one. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the running game is fixable, but it can still be decent. And I think Philly can still be pretty good, even though I'll be the first to admit I raved about him through the preseason because they were sensational for all four games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I slightly overrated what that meant to this. But I must say, you brought up the second half at Atlanta. I saw the preseason Eagles in the second half at Atlanta. Right. I saw them just rock and roll up and down the field, and they came from 20 to 3 down at halftime. And if Parkey hadn't had made that, what was it, like a 44-yard yep. field goal, they yep. win the game. I'm pretty sure we're talking about the one-and-one one Eagles. And in, in a way, because you've got Philly roots, you, you tend to overreact a little bit like Philly fans overreact, especially after Dallas does that to you. Yeah. For, for a, Really, it's the fourth straight year they've lost at home to Dallas, but it's three straight years Chip Kelly has lost at home to Dallas. Yeah. Can I give my Cowboys defense a little bit of credit instead of heaping all the blame on Chip Kelly? Because in three tries at home against my Cowboy defense, Chip Kelly has averaged 13 points a game. That's phenomenal. Against every other opponent at home, Chip Kelly has averaged 30 points a game. Yeah, that's wow. Okay, no, what? Th that says something. Like, yeah. they, they've got your number here. And by the way, n not that I'm going to defend Byron Maxwell because you're dead right about everything you've said, but remember, somehow my Cowboys held on to the football for 40 minutes of that game. They dominated the first half in time of possession, so it's 40 minutes to 20 minutes. So that means Byron and company are on the field, and you can certainly oh, yeah. speak to this. It's a lot of snaps, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you're just I, worn I, out. Yep. You're right. And I think yep. a couple things when you're playing the Cowboys, we always talk about time possession yep. not important with the Eagles. Yep. It needs to be important when you play the Cowboys because what they need and want to do in running the football. Yep. And the running game needs to be fixed more like the Patriots when they run LeGarrette Blunt. That's what... That's the adjustment that Chip Kelly needs to make with the running game as far as DeMarco Murray is concerned. And I agree with you. I think the Cowboys don't get enough credit or didn't get enough credit of doing a good job. Now, I knew they were going to do a good job against Murray because, you know what, you're pumped up. You're excited about playing, you know, that guy, even the punter. And, and I don't you know, think I he's just, yeah. like, But the job they did against Sproles was spectacular. It is pretty now, good. Sproles, has been successful in any type of situation. They did an outstanding job against Spurs. Well, so I think quiet. LeGarrette Blunt more for yeah. the Eagles running game um, and the defensively, they need to pressure the quarterback more. Gen ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it wasn't just about this, the Eagles defense. It wasn't just about the Dallas Cowboys holding on to the football. 
The Philadelphia Eagles, they went three and out on five of their first seven possessions, mm -hmm. and the other two were four and outs. They were doing nothing offensively. Mm -hmm. Now, Darren Sproles, keying on him, definitely had something to do with it. But if you have no running game, because Ryan Matthew only gets one attempt, and DeMarco Murray's, you got him running east and west instead of north and south, then all of a sudden that allows you to key on other dudes. What makes Des Bryant special? There are plenty of plays where you know exactly yeah. what the Dallas Cowboys are going yeah. to do. And Des Bryant says, so what? What are you going to do about it? I'm with Joe Montana last week again. Other than Jerry Rice, tell me a receiver that you wanted to play with. He said Chris Carter, our very own Chris Carter. Why? He said because from the time we were in the Pro Bowl together, he said just throw the ball up, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is that who is that person on the Eagles? The fact is no one is. Yeah. So now we get to Chip Kelly. Back to Chip Kelly, because Chip Kelly is the one that made those decisions. He made those modifications. Can it be fixed? Of course it can be fixed, because they have the talent. The question about them is their culture and the toughness that comes with it. Because as individuals, we know individually they are tough. Mm -hmm. But Eric, you have played on teams where you're tough. And you can pick out a guy on the line, he's tough. And another guy in the secondary, he's tough. And another guy in the offense, and he's tough. But collectively, if you're surrounded by a bunch of dudes where Chip Kelly is breathing in your face about, just do this the way that I say. And do that the way that I say. And we will be perfect. That ain't, that, that ain't the man's okay, game so, quick that question. we are accustomed so, to see. So how did Chip Kelly, what was his first two years record, 10 and 6, 10 and 6? Right. And then last year they got to 9 and 3, if yes. I remember, how would that before happen? they cratered? That's right. But how did all, they do that? Also have, because we all know that the man knows football and he can coach. Nobody's saying otherwise. The problem is, is that those were with other players. He got rid of nine different dudes, all contributing for other teams right now. He has changed the culture of this team. Those, the guys you're talking about who will be able to make a play even when the play is looks like it's, those guys are gone. Not not my boy. The they're the guy who can make they're, something out of nothing. They're not gone. tough guys. They're just talented guys. Yeah, right. it is. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, y'all finally hearing me now? <laughs> well, but you've been talking about saying. soft. I'm, I'm talking saying. about talent, man. <laughs> I'm saying okay. they're talented yeah. guys. Yeah. They ain't tough. Yeah. Talented, yeah. Ain't tough. Yeah. not tough. Let's leave it there. You ain't tough, what are you? I'm talented. Soft. You ain't yeah. tough, what are you? You're not in the league. You're, you're soft. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be a rough rider. It's football. It's gotta be a rough rider. This ain't tennis. We gotta put flags on the quarterback, though. Yeah. yeah. Eric, yeah. thank you so much for being with All us. Right, this was fun. We appreciate you. Enjoy the games tonight. Yes, the game. Sure. Week two was a role reversal of sorts for the one and two picks. I'm confused, gentlemen. Need you to help me out. Mm. So, what did week two tell us about Mariota and Winston? They'll break that down coming up.